Hi, I'm Garth Bruner with ArtofGarth.com. In this video, I'll show the various techniques Freehand and Illustrator use to create polygons and stars. Since Adobe killed Freehand, I'm hoping the Adobe Illustrator develop developers will implement some of Freehand's features in future versions of Illustrator. And here we are in Illustrator, and this star tool is buried under the rectangle tool, which is the default. Um, so what we'll do to draw a star is select the star tool and simply click in the middle of the page and it asks for the exact measurements of the star, how many points you want. One problem with this way of doing things is there's no preview, there's no way to tell and I don't think many people measure their stars and so it's, it's pretty much a guessing game at this point. Seven points, that, that sounds fine, but maybe I wanted this to be a little, little bit more spiky. I'd have to go back in, uh, make these changes. 0.5, there, it's a little bit better. Um, and it's kind of a wonky way of doing it. Uh, so another way you can do it is just click and drag with the star tool. And while I have the mouse button held down, this star is active. It's um, I can change the the parameters of the star like I push the up arrow key and the down arrow key and it will increase the number of points or decrease the number of points as long as I'm holding the mouse button down another way I can change it while holding it down is hitting the command key and dragging and it makes the spikes uh, change size and so that's um, the different options I have with this and as soon as I let go it is now considered a path and I can go through and edit it just point by point. But as for changing the star parameters, um, I'd have to click and drag the star tool yet again um, to make those changes if I wanted to do it the right, you know, a different way. Okay, so that is Illustrator. Now let's move over to Freehand and show how that's done there. The star tool is actually the polygon tool and what we'll do is set the parameters before we draw on this one and we'll double click the polygon tool to have it come up here what's nice is we have a preview uh, we can make it a star or a polygon when you click on the star you have more options here you can make it more obtuse more acute choose the automatic and click OK and then you click and drag to do the star now this one you can go ahead and let go with the mouse button and click the subselect tool here and you'll notice that the points are active. This is still considered a polygon. If you look here in the object tab, it's still considered a polygon and so it's still active. It's still, um, you can still make changes to this. So you click the inner radius points and you can change the angles, click the outer, and change the angles there, the size, and that's as long as you keep this a polygon, you can make these changes and you can keep it a polygon forever if you want. Um, if you want to make it a path, if you want to change points and such, all you would have to do is go to modify and ungroup and it becomes a path and now these points are editable just like a regular path okay another way let's make that back into a polygon by hitting undo notice here we have a bunch of options that we can change we can add points there make it a nine point we can change the uh, the size of the outer points or the outer uh, radius here and let's make it to 150 makes it larger and we'll shrink it to uh, 25 for the inner and you can change that whenever you want to these two angles right here do the same as grabbing the outer and the inner points and changing the angles so you can change it there one other thing let's do less points to show you something and also make it a more obtuse is that the right word we can change the roundness 
of these points. So let's say 20 for the outer. You see how it rounds up? Let's make it a little bit more dramatic, like 50. And the inner points can also be rounded. And what's nice is you can also change the angles of those outer points, even if they are curved as such. It gets a little wonky if you do it too much. You see the extra points and lines. But it gives you a, a good sense of uh, a good amount, actually, of control in making these different stars. And so those, those are the differences between freehand and illustrator. Hopefully, now that uh, freehand is gone, illustrator will be able to take on some of these um, these attributes and make it a little bit uh, easier to use. That is my hope. Thanks.